how to install a CD-ROM on a computer. This is on a desktop. It should be similar to laptops. You just have to flip it over and remove all the little screws on it. Remove the cover of the laptop and you'd be able to access the CD-ROM. What it would look like, it would look like this. This is for the desktop, but for the uh, like a laptop, it would be a lot thinner on it. So let's go ahead and get started. For this desktop computer, what you want to do is go and slide out the computer and you'll have the side piece here. You want to go and slide that off uh, on the back of it before you do that. Make sure there's no screws on mine. There is not. There should be only two screws. One about here and the other one along here somewhere on the back end of the computer. Alright, got it slid out. And where I'm talking about is, there's where screw holes at. And another one here. I do not have the screws like I said. So they kind of did I guess helped you out and gave you a little pull handle for you to pull on. And you want to give it a good firm pull until it pops off. So now it slides off and you just want to pull it off. It's got the little grooves up there, the four little bigger holes. One here. Then you got one on the bottom. Over here. So it basically goes along here and kind of locks it in place. So once you get that, I got two CD-ROM. The one I'm needing to replace is this top one here. But before you be able to do that, so you want to bring the computer forward a little bit. A little bit off the desktop. Make sure it doesn't fall off course and you got these little tabs here you want to pull out gently on it while pulling this out and it's kind of almost like a door so it's facing this way while you pull the uh, three little tabs you want to open it this way kind of away from you basically so I got the tabs unlocked and all you just do kind of pull out like that and just go ahead and remove it it's got like little hooks on it I don't know if you'll be able to see it Kind of hooks it in on the side along here. It goes here, here, and one right there that just kind of hooks into almost like a little door. So after you've done that, on mine, it takes a little Phillips head screwdriver to remove those two screws. So either after or before you remove the screws, you'll have connectors back here that you want to go and disconnect. There's two little connectors, one here and that little one here. If you've done that, you can just go and slide it out. I'll wiggle it a little bit and out it goes. The reason why I'm replacing that one, the tray does not want to come out when you push it, the button on it. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And I got, not, I got my new one here. Looks just like the other one person that sent it to me gave me a little cable. I do not need that one. I'll throw it in here for extra spare parts. I'll stuff it in there later. Then basically it goes the same way you took it off. So the buttons, I don't know if you noticed on it, the buttons on here is on the right side. So the buttons over here on the right side. So you just want to kind of Wiggle it back and forth till it slides in place. Then you want to look at the holes and wait till you get it lined up. Right about here, you're lined up. And I would say either way, you can put the screws in and connect it, or connect it and put the screws in. Either way, whatever works for you. Right, I got just one screw in there for right now. And then the, the cable that you moved from the old one, go ahead and feed that back up there. Trying to kind of be neat with it, not get it all twisted and tangled up. And you want to look in there and see where it's at and go and plug it back in. It's coated, so you have to look on this and see which way the bigger tab is facing the right side, left side, or if it's up or down ways. After you get it all screwed in and plugged in, you can go ahead and turn it on. I'm not going to put everything all back together. You want to make sure it works. See, they're both lighting up. Turn on the screen. So that's a good sign there. The top one's lighting up, so I know it's reading it. Now let's make sure the driver of this is installed on it. Alright, computer's booted up. 
what you want to do is go to your documents down here see if it pulls up I pull it up twice I only need one so let's make it bigger we got two of them right here so what I like to do is just click on this PC got the one here and I want to say there's a CD in it so let's, yeah that was there's a CD in this one let's see which one it is I've never this is the first time doing it so go ahead and eject it hmm an H&R block huh no surprise. Oh, we need that. Oh, you know it works, so let's try. Go ahead and go back to it. And that's what it should look like. You can double click it. And you know it works. And it'll ask you to enter, insert the CD. And obviously, I do know it works because there was a CD in it already, so I guess I came lucky with that. And go ahead and just close it if you want. And go ahead and put your cover back on vice versa. Make sure you have this in started in first, like the door. Just kind of basically you're closing the door almost. Make sure the clips clip in along here. All right, the cover's back on just to make sure. Gonna take that CD out of it. And you see both of them work on it, the computer now. So after you've done that, go and put the side cover back on. I'm just gonna stuff that extra cable in here just for some extra parts in there. Doesn't hurt to have extra parts for your computer. And to install the door lid cover, whatever you'd call it, just kind of go and slide, uh, put it on there. How when it was out it had like a gap just like so and go and just push it in this will take two hands for me to do that make sure it's all lined up and go and give it a good firm push and there you have it you have successfully installed a CD-ROM on a computer thanks for watching